Hello everyone. So today uh, we will be discuss about STLC or software testing life cycle. So first of all, we need to know that what is STLC. So as a tester, we all know that tester, tester or testing team follows various strategies and approaches to fulfill any software quality or to get the better quality. We have to uh, we have to follow various strategy. We have to follow the various approaches, right? So so all of them. One is the interesting uh, topic is that uh, one time one is the interesting process is that software testing life cycle or STLC. So now what is STLC? STLC is a sequence of specific activities conducted during the testing process to ensure software goals are met, right? So in this process, what we will do? We have to uh, uh, conduct various uh, uh, activities so that the testing process to ensure the software quality goals are met. OK, and uh, the second thing is that the STLC involves both verifications and validations activity. So what is verification and what is validation? In my next video, I will cover up all these things. So don't worry about that. So in day by day, I will uh, cover all the things related manual testing so that you guys are uh, better to know that uh, you will understand all the things of software testing. OK, so as as of this, as of this topic, I just want to only say that STLC involves both verifications and validations activities. And the third point is that in the STLC, in the in the initial stage of STLC, while the software product or applications is being developed, the testing team analyze and define the scope of testing. Right before the uh, before we have to analyze and define the scope of testing before the uh, software is being developed. Right and also that we have to uh, we have to analyze the entry and exit criteria and also the test cases and it helps to reduce the test cycle time and also enhance the product quality suppose uh, suppose there is a customer and he gives us some um, requirement to any specific company so as a requirement the company will start the uh, development process so when the when the development team will start the development process before that if the testing team is analyze the analyze the defines and scope of the testing so that they can easily that will be very handy to the testing team so that they can cover up all the things and as well as it will help the uh, it will help to reduce the test cycle time and also enhance the product quality right so as soon as the development phase is over, the testing team is ready with test cases and start their execution. Right. So when the development is when the development team is developing, developing at that time, if the testing team has already defined the scope of testing so that what will happen? So when the development phase is over, then the testing team easily jump to the test cases and so they can start the execution. So it will help find it will help to find the bugs in the early phase. So before uh, giving any software to the customer or before or uh, uploading anything in the live. So the testing team easily can find the bugs in the very early stage. So that is the main fund of software testing life cycle uh, model. And as we already know, as we already uh, know, known that that STLC stand for software testing life cycle. What is STLC? STLC stand for software testing life cycle. As, as I am, uh, I am going to uh, give you an example. As a human being, all we have a life cycle, right? So each and everything they have a life cycle. So like that, STLC also have a life cycle. So what is the phase of that life cycle? The four, the six phases are there in the STLC life cycle. One is requirement analysis. Second is test planning. Third is test case development. Then fourth is test environment setup. Fifth is 
test execution and the number 6 is test cycle closure so we have to guys make sure we have to remember all the uh, phases one by one and step by step so it, it is a very very important questions for the interview process and as a tester all we have to know that what is SCLC and what is the phases of that so that our testing process will be very easy to us right so the first process is requirement analysis what is that so requirement analysis mean means the uh, the STLC team or the testing team understand the requirements. If necessary, the testing team may also consult with stakeholder to clarify their requirement, right? And the requirements may be functional or may be non-functional. So what is functional? What is non-functional? Functional means, suppose there is a uh, login application and the login page, there is three module. One is username, second one is password and third is uh, login button so functional means the if we click on the login button login page should re redirect to the suppose sign up page so that is the functional thing and what is non-functional non-functional means we have to check the load we have to check the stress we have to check the performance we have to check the stability so apart from that functional thing when we have to check the load we have to check the stress we have to check the volume we have to check that performance so that is uh, under the non-functional testing so what is what will be done in the requirement analysis phase in the requirement analysis phase the testing team consulting with stakeholders to clarify their requirements and the requirements may be functional and may be non-functional okay and so what activities we will perform in the requirement analysis phase? The first one is identify customer needs and types of tests to be performed. The first one is that identify the customer needs and type of test, the types of test to be performed. Means, means suppose there is an application called Flipkart. So what is the basic fund of Flipkart? What is the business logic of Flipkart? In that Flipkart, application the business main business scenario is that any user can search their product or they can add that product so it will go to the add to cart page then they will payment and finally we will get we will uh, and finally we can um, uh, book that product right or we can buy that product so that is the main funder right so what is the main activities of what is the main activities of requirement analysis first is we have to identify the customer needs what is the customer needs what is the main purpose of customer what is the main business logic of that customer we have to identify that and we have to types of tests to be performed right the second point is we have to gather details about requirements from the customer about that application right we have to gather we have to we have to uh, gather all the details about the requirements what what is the requirements what is the business logic in future my application what is looking like what will be look like we have to gather all the requirements from the customer and the third point is we have to prepare the rtm means requirement testability matrix so what is requirement testability matrix? In my later video, I will tell you everything in the requirement testability matrix. But as of now, you guys have to remember that what is testability matrix? Testability matrix means there is a document. Suppose uh, the customer or the client send us some document and we have writing some test cases uh, with comparing that document. So in RTM or in requirement testability matrix, we have to map the customer requirement and our test cases in a one seat that is called requirement testability matrix okay in my later video i will discuss in uh, rtm in very detail okay so don't worry about that so as of now rtm means that the customer requirement and our test cases should be mapped in should be mapped in any particular seats or any seats that is called requirement testability matrix so we have to prepare the requirement testability matrix in the requirement analysis phase right and number four 
we have to identify the test environment details. So in which environment we are going to test that environment details we have to identify. And the last one is that automation feasibility analysis. If automation is required or automation testing is required in our application, then we have then the automation is feasible or not in our application that is to be we have to analyze that thing means automation feasibility analysis okay so that is the main activities of requirement analysis phase and now the second point is that test planning what is that so as as the name test planning we can uh, we can easily uh, define that we have to plan we have to plan something about our test right we have to planning if any work will done if any anything we we are doing so we have to make a plan for that so in that stlc model we have to make some test plan so what is that in the what we will do in the test planning phase the phase so we can tell that the phase includes implementing and defining a state a test strategy in the testing plan and estimating the efforts and cost of the testing team. Suppose the customer given some requirement. So uh, on the basis of the requirement, uh, the main funder is that the development team will develop that software and the testing team will test the software with comparing the client requirement. Now, when the when the customer or when the client is given us to the requirement, so we have to make sure that there is many things is there like in that project automation is applicable or not how many time it will needed how cost it will be needed how effort it will it, it will needed so each and everything we will plan that plan in the test planning phase so what is the main activities of test planning phase number one preparation of test plan documents for different type of testing as we already know that there is multiple types of testing are there functional testing non-functional testing and in that functional testing there is uh, unit testing integration testing system testing acceptance testing smoke testing sanity testing regression testing lots of testing are there and uh, and uh, in that non-functional testing there is performance testing load testing test testing volume testing many many testing activities are there many many types of testing are there so in that test planning phase we have to prepare the test plan documents for different types of testing okay and the second point is that selection of test tool okay we have to we have to we have to select right means suppose in my automation in my application automation is needed so for that automation what tool we will use we will go for selenium or we will go for cypress or we will go for protector anything anything we have to uh, 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 needed in, in my testing activities so we have to select the testing tools right and the number three we have to test we have to estimate the test effort how many test effort how how much test effort will needed for that particular software application testing so that effort we have to estimate and the number fourth we have to we have to planning some resource okay we have to planning some resource and we have to divide that planning to our uh, and also we have to deciding the roles and responsibilities suppose in my project there are three tester okay in my project there are three tester so if, if every tester is jumping on a particular module in my application so what will happen so same duplicate if my application if there is any issues the same duplicate issue will be created and and for a single module we have assigned the three tester that means totally waste of time so apart from that if if any particular module if we assign only one tester that means that is very much handy to cover up the another module with that another tester okay so we have to planning 
we have to resource planning and deciding the roles and responsibility right and the number six is that training requirement suppose training requirement means suppose um, uh, there is two scenario i can tell you suppose in my application automation is re required and one of my tester he he don't know about automation okay so for that purpose there is uh, for that purpose we have to um, uh, we have to uh, make a training for that particular tester so that he can know that how automation works and he can easily jump to the automation process so that is the one part and the another part is that suppose uh, let's assume uh, I, uh, in my company there is a project and the project is uh, uh, project is running since last five uh, last five years just for example in my company one project is running and from the since last five years okay and the new uh, in the current time one new tester has assigned to that project and he has suppose one years of experience so he he will be unable to test the applications very carefully because the applications is running from the last five years and the tester has joined currently recently with the one year of one year of experience so he has some lack of knowledge so for that purpose we have to training we have to train that tester so that's why we have to training the requirement for that test planning phases now clear and the third step is that test case development what is that test case development in that test case development tester create the test cases and each case define test inputs for data procedure execution condition expected result actual result everything is there in the test cases okay so we have to make sure we have to write the test cases so that once the applications will develop so that testing team can easily jump and run all the test cases and execute all the test cases one by one right so for that purpose we have to we have to uh, make sure that we are creating test cases and also make sure that we have to cover it we have to and we have to uh, uh, create 100% test coverage now what is 100% test coverage 100% test coverage means there are positive data and negative data means positive scenario and negative scenario or positive test cases and negative test cases both are covered in the test case development so that we can get the 100% test coverage so any test any test cases need not miss for that okay so for that we have to create the test case development we have to create some test cases and if necessary in my project the automation is necessary so for that automation skip need to uh, create for the test case development so what is the main activities of the test case development first one is that creation of test cases and automation skip if applicable and the number two is that review test cases and test key script who will review that our test manager or our product manager or uh, sometimes our customer will review the test cases and number three is that we have to create the test data means which data we are used when we are, we are running our test cases so that data we have to create okay so that is the phase of test case development now fourth case is that test environment setup so in that fourth phase the qa team or testing team is configured and deployed to allow tester to test the feature means we have to set up an environment like the tester must keep the test environment ready by understanding the required architecture environment setup and ppl in the hardware software requirement list means i can give you one example suppose uh, in a uh, suppose we are we are testing any module or we are testing any applications so in that test environment setup we have to make sure that in which browser we have to run that 
application or we have to execute that application we have to make sure that that browser is installed in my system we have to make sure that which um, uh, uh, browser or which operating systems or which versions is that application is that application is reliable for both desktop and mobile and ipad so we have to make sure all the things we have to for for all the things we need to create some test environment setup so what is the main activities of the main uh, test environment setup that set up test environment and test data test, test data mean which data we are using means suppose there is a field that username and password so in a username field which data we are using to test that username field okay so that is called test data there is uh, two type of test data one is positive test data so one is negative test data suppose in my application uh, uh, my application my username is that abc at the red gmail.com so if we put the abc at the red gmail.com and if we put the password one two three four five six just for example then my applications will open but instead of that we are using that xyz at the red gmail.com or password i am putting that five four three two one like that so that means that is a negative data so if we're using that negative data that application shouldn't open right so we have to make sure that in that environment test environment setup phase and the fifth one is that test execution what is test execution test execution means in that test in my test in uh, test case development phase uh, we have written all the test cases we have cover 100 percent test coverage so in that test execution phase we have to execute all the test cases one by one right so what is the main activities of that first one is that execute test cases according to test plan according to test plan we have to execute the test cases number two we have to generate a test report and log defects for failed cases suppose we are testing anything and then there is any issues or bug has come so for that we have to we have to log that defects so the second point of test execution activities is that generate a test report and log defects for failed cases right number three we have to map defects to test cases in rtm in the rtm also we have to map the defects or test cases number four we have to perform the retest suppose when we are we are testing anything any issues has come so suddenly we are logging the defects and developer will fix the defects after fixing the defects by the developer again testing team will test the uh, that uh, test cases so that is called retesting so we have to perform retesting in the test execution phase also and the number five number five is that we have to track track the defects to complete the test we have to track the defect to complete the test that is the test execution phase and the sixth one is test cycle closer test cycle closer money means we can easily tell you that in the test cycle closer everything will be closed right so in that it is the last stage of stlc so a test result report is generated the report should contain the entire process of testing new requirement such as the analysis between the expected outcome and the actual outcome whether the objectives were made or not the time taken to test the feature cost test coverage and if there were any defects and details about it so that is the test cycle closer activity so what we will do in that test, test closer activities uh, activities test uh, activities phase we have to evaluate the test cycle closer complete completion based on the time test coverage cost software critical business objectives and quality matrix etc etc and the second point is that we have to prepare the test matrix based on the above parameters means cost software critical business of uh, business objectives quality matrix like that and we have to prepare the closer report so as suppose uh, my uh, my all the test all the phases has done so everything will be uh, done for that uh, uh, everything will be done so after completion all the things we have to prepare one test closer report right and the 
last one and the fourth fourth point is that test result analysis means to find out the defect distributions by type and severity so we have to make sure everything in the test cycle closer as we are closing our last phase okay so that is the six six phases of stlc and make sure we have remembered all the things very carefully okay now i can just give you some basic uh, things of the stlc like what is the character characteristics of stlc means what is the characteristic of stlc stlc start as soon as requirements are defined or software requirement documents are re are shared by stakeholder as you already know that as i already discussed about these things and stlc yields a step by step process to ensure the quality software right so if we if we follow all the stlc phases one by one then we can get a better quality software right so that are the characteristics of stlc now what is the benefit of software testing life cycle or stlc what are the benefit there are many benefit is there like right so first is that increased consistency and effectiveness effectiveness as project requirements and analyzed we can easily increase the consistency and effectiveness right the number 2 is that clear and defined goals for test products which help track the project process as we already discussed that thing before and the number 3 is that the confidence in each feature passes testing before additional adding additional feature means we have that is means the benefits of that stlc is that that is given us to the confidence in each features passes testing before adding additional features and tests are designed in a meaningful manner because we have to make, we have to test planning we have to requirement analysis we have to test case development so doing all the things easily we can uh, we usually the test are designed in a meaningful ma manner obviously and the next one is that specifications are clear which helps the team means as we are already requirement analysis doing requirement analysis we we are doing the requirement analysis and we are directly getting involved with the customer or stakeholder so that's why that's why specifications will be very clear and that will help us to the team and the last one is that it is a systematic systematic approach that quickly resolve bug and defect in the product means why it is systematic approach because one by one step will be done first requirement analysis will be done then test planning the test case development test environment setup so if we get any error any bug in the test execution phase so before doing the test cycle closer we will directly contact with the test case development or we will directly contact with the developer team to fix that issue so in the stlc model phases after after doing all the phases when we are going when we are going to the test cycle closer report before that my software is error free or my software is defect free or we can give the customer is a very good or quality product so that is the benefits of software testing life cycle so that's all about stlc or software life software testing life cycle so i think it will be very useful to you guys so make sure you are following my all the video okay from the from the very starting so you can understand everything step by step so if you like my video if you if you like my video please thumbs up and uh, uh, if there is anything doubt in your mind just comment out and the main thing is that please please subscribe to my channel edupat and click on the bell icon so that you can get my testing videos update very fast so thank you for today see you